Welcome to our Cybersecurity Information Night. Uh, today, we have an exciting opportunity to talk to you about a future-focused, student-centered, innovation-driven program that we're starting here at South Fayette High School. We're partnering with uh, Digital Promise to launch a three-year cybersecurity academy at South Fayette High School. And this academy will start uh, next fall. And so uh, tonight, we have a few things we'd like to share with you. Uh, first of all, we have a guest speaker, Sean Wilson from IBM, who's going to introduce you to the field of cybersecurity and all the exciting things it can offer. Next, you'll have an opportunity to hear from a few cybersecurity experts. And these are actually people from our community who work in the field of cybersecurity. And they're very excited to share with you about what they love about their job and what they do. And then finally, we have an opportunity to share with you some details about the cybersecurity program and then some time to answer any questions you may have. So coming up next, we have a short video. She was really excited to be here and to speak with you, but due to a work obligation, she couldn't attend. And so uh, Sean Wilson, who works for IBM, was able to record a short video for you. And coming up next is this video. Um, it always feels like home whenever I have to speak in front of a group of learners. So uh, let's see, fun fact about me, um, I am originally from California and I am bi-coastal primarily. I spend most of my time in California. However, uh, most of my time also is spent back east um, in the Washington DC area. Let's see, another a few other fun facts is I am a former middle school um, and high school teacher um many 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 years ago i don't want to date myself but it's been many many years ago but i also served in the role of a, a middle school principal in three different states north carolina georgia and in maryland now the only reason why i decided to spread my wings um, in this education space is because you know i wanted to make a bigger impact influencing teachers globally so Having served in these roles, it really allowed me to really have an insight into how students learn, how teachers teach, um, and most importantly, um, having that support and involvement from all stakeholders, whether you're a teacher, principal, parent, local businesses, and even corporations like IBM. So in my current role as a corporate social responsibility manager, I do oversee organizations uh, that wanna provide uh, skill-based learning uh, to their learners um, by integrating our IBM Skills Build programming, specifically as it relates to cybersecurity. We've made a commitment uh, to make sure that we uh, provide the resources and the tools for organizations that want to provide this uh, type of skill to their learners. Um, so you should be honored um, that South Fayette um, has been chosen as one of the 11 districts in the entire country who's going to be integrating a proven successful cybersecurity program um, using components of the IBM Skills Bill um, cybersecurity uh, course that I just mentioned earlier. So why am I here? Why are you looking? Why are you looking at this video? Right. Um, so as a corporate social responsibility manager, I I see what's behind the curtain, you know, as it relates to what's needed in the near future regarding jobs. And I want to talk about a few points that I think you will find valuable um, as you embark on the cyber program in your in your school. So one, when we're thinking about cybersecurity jobs, first of all, it's the data is is mind blowing. Um, there are close to a, a, over a million unfulfilled openings in the cybersecurity industry in the United States. Currently, by the time you all start your cyber program, that number, it may not have doubled because I know it's going to be in a few months where you're going to be implementing it into your, your school, but it's growing and there's so many unfulfilled openings. But that's not the reason why I'm, I'm talking about that. I want you to understand the importance of why it's in high demand. So many of the jobs today, as you know, are automated, right? You you call someone and you you know there's an automated person talking to you, and you're like, I kind of want to talk to a real person. Well, we can't get past that. This is the type of world we're living in today. But unfortunately, the information that that companies have to keep private for us 
is still stored online. Um, and that has a direct impact um, on the increase of cyber attacks. So for example, even in schools like your school, there's privacy data, you know, there's your birth date, social security numbers, and hackers can get a hold of this information and do some real damage. They can pretend that they're you, um, damage your credit, damage your name. So we want to make sure that just from and, and I only gave you that example because it's something you can probably relate to right now. But you have, you know, countries that are really taking the cybersecurity professionals seriously because this can this can destroy an entire country. So companies are hiring um, a number of cybersecurity professionals, um, and they rather invest in the in the time um, on the on the front end um, rather than having their um, rather than having the hackers attack them. Uh, so um, also. Another point I wanted to make when it comes to the cybersecurity, why I think you should be really excited, is that in any field, you can incorporate cybersecurity, whether it be at a law firm, whether it be at a hospital, whether it be at the government. There's so many different avenues and specialties that you can in, um, embark on when it comes to the cybersecurity field. So anything you like, it could be in the arts, it could be forensic, science any different um, industry, you're going to need to protect folks, um, you know, data. And what I like about the cybersecurity field, it's stimulating. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like doing the same thing every single day. Now, some folks, that's okay. You know, they feel this, it's stable. They want to know what they're doing every day. But if you're one of those folks that are like, I like to experience challenges and problem solving and critical think thinking and thinking, hmm, I can solve that. Uh, this may be the field for you. All right. But being in the cyber field, it does take a commitment to learn because cybersecurity is ever changing, right? It requires dedication um, because these cyber folks that are, or hackers, let's just say that, they're going to find new ways to steal data on the daily. So that's why cybersecurity is so important um, because we want to be able to, to identify these threats before they even happen. So most hiring managers, when they find out that you are within the cybersecurity field, they love it because they know in order for you to be in that industry, you have to have a certain skill set. For example, the critical thinking skills I mentioned before, they're vital uh, to any job, but specifically to the cyber, uh, to being a cybersecurity uh, professional. Um, and I know that you all want to hear about, well, if I were to enter this field, what type of salary can I make, right? I know when I was a teenager, I didn't so much think about um, the my salary. Um, I didn't know what, you know, 50,000, 30,000 or 100,000. I didn't know what that got me, but I did know that, you know, the higher uh, the salary was, the more, the better off I'd probably be in life. Um, but uh, I'd like for you to know that the cybersecurity salaries are very high. Um, and because the cyber attacks are so frequent, uh, they do cost a lot of businesses um, a lot of money and a lot of time if their system is hacked. So as a result, cybersecurity salaries uh, are mostly above average, even for entry level jobs. And although, you know, within uh, your home or school schools, everyone wants uh, their learners to go to college. But sometimes that may not be feasible, right? Um, we want to always shoot for the, the highest bar. However, in this field, because it's such a high demand, you can enter at an entry level earning over six figures, right? Which means over $100,000 a year. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about, well, I, I, I think I have the skill set uh, that it takes. And again, you don't have to be in IT per se, where you have to have a lot of prerequisites uh, to be a cybersecurity fundamental, uh, cybersecurity sorry, specialist. So um, anyway, but I hope that what I've had to say inspires you. I hope it excites you um, and motivates motivate you. And my plan is that when this program is is officially kicked off. I would love to come and visit to see how you all are leveraging the program. Uh, I know your future looks bright.
Um, and again, I'm sorry that I can't be there with you today, but know that I'm there in spirit. Um, and I hope that you really would consider um, just everything that I've said um, and everything that you're going to learn um, forthcoming in the near future. I hope you enjoyed that video from Sean Wilson. Uh, coming up next, you have an opportunity to hear from a few cybersecurity experts right here from our community. Yeah, cybersecurity is the future. There's always going to be cybersecurity jobs because there's always going to be information technology aspects out there, and there's always going to be a need to keep those things secure. Um, and with cybersecurity, the possibilities are endless. You can either you can either try to secure things and defend, or you can go on the offensive and try to test your own security practices or someone else's if they pay you to do it. Um, there's just a lot of different avenues you can take with cybersecurity. Uh, the, the possibilities are actually endless. I've been in four different positions within cybersecurity and none of them were anything like the other. So why should students be interested in cybersecurity? I can tell you from firsthand experience that I love my job and I would love for everyone else to love their job as much as I do. And cybersecurity is one of those areas in which you can create your own path because it is in an industry that's always changing. And um, that change allows you to grow and learn new technology and interface with new people over the years. And just because you're in cybersecurity domain A when you start doesn't mean you're going to be there tomorrow. And then it's an incredible opportunity. Um, and who knows if we'll ever have an opportunity like this will be presented with an industry that's growing at this rate. So it's just a sheer uh, amount of opportunities that you have. You don't have to be a technical person, a coder, real coder to actually get into cybersecurity. Even if you're good at analysis, even if you like solving big problems, uh, cybersecurity is the right field for you. And the opportunity is just vast. As more and more technology is being implemented, new AIs or uh, blockchain or any other technology that comes in, along with that comes a lot of vulnerabilities or weaknesses. So cybersecurity is the defense for you to kind of implement to kind of um, help the business problems. So opportunity is vast, the pay is good, so it's always uh, good for you to kind of take it on. It's such a broad profession. Really, there's so many options you can go into. You can go into the software side, you can go into the hardware side, you can go on the offensive security side, so you can attack people and, and, and check their defenses. You can work for a company that's trying to defend against that, so you could be on the company side. You can work, like I do, I work in consulting. So I work in a niche called OT security where I'm trying to secure critical infrastructure and plants. Uh, so you can work in consulting and, and, and just work for a bunch of different places. So, so for me, it was just, it just, there's so much variety that never gets boring and you never feel kind of trapped in your career because you can really extend and kind of move around and, and do all kinds of different aspects of it. We've just been hearing about this exciting new opportunity that um, South Fed is embarking on uh, in invent or bringing to um, the district a cybersecurity program. And I just want to take a few moments to go over that with you. And um, as you know, um, the our strategic plan that was completed last year and has a five-year plan has three pillars. Uh, and those three pillars that we base everything on, on the work that we're doing is, um, is the work that we're doing student-centered? Is it future-focused? And is it innovation-driven? Those are the three, um, the three tenets that we're trying to um, use as our overarching umbrella for all of our work. And we feel very strongly that this cybersecurity program actually hits all three of them. We don't have to hit all three as we're doing our work. Um, as long as it's focused on at least one of those areas, we're happy. Uh, student-centered is, uh, is a prime focus, but this one just happens to hit all three. Uh, thanks, Matt, for controlling that for me. So um, you probably heard a lot of this um, in the, your three breakout sessions. I know that our uh, expert from IBM that came to us uh, earlier also shared these things with you. But why did we choose cybersecurity? We're going to be choosing other pathways and developing other programs over, over the coming years. But why start with cybersecurity first? Um, one is that we know the, the experts in the field have shared with us, there are a million jobs now that are unfilled, a million. And by 2025, three and a half million jobs unfilled. Um, so it's a really high demand field. And it's not just a high demand field, it's one with great pay. 
if you come out of our high school programs and don't continue on your education, you're still likely to do an entry level position of anywhere to 60 to $90,000. And you even heard IBM say three figures, 100,000, um, depending on where you are. Um, and But if you went on, you took our information and, and moved on higher, you could get a mid-level position or an advanced, uh, advanced position with experience and, and college education at a much higher rate. Um, and then really the possibilities are unlimited. I mean, are, if you're into fashion design, it really doesn't matter what the field is. There is a need for cybersecurity because there is absolutely nothing that we do today that does not involve the internet. Everything is connected. Everything is stored. Um, you know, we don't have to worry about our storage on our computers anymore because we put everything in the cloud. Even on our phone, everything's on the cloud. Um, so it doesn't matter the field. Cybersecurity is going to be part of that field for sure. So those are why we chose uh, cyber. Those are some of the reasons we chose cybersecurity. Um, as one of the, the first programs that we're embarking on. I think we're really proud and excited to say we're one of 11 schools in the entire um, country that is actually embarking on, uh, on this. Um, and uh, we're, we're very confident uh, that we're gonna be able to be successful because we know we're following in the footsteps of one district that did and has been incredibly successful. We also believe in that success because of our industry partners. You have met three of them, actually four of them this evening, but I will tell you that we have close to 24 people who have already committed, um, who work in the cybersecurity field with, in a variety of um, businesses and industries who are willing to be our partners. And um, those partners, are going to be crucial to our success. Uh, our hope is with respect to this, our student outcomes, we're looking that we're going to have um, students who are absolutely ready when they graduate from high school to enter the workforce. We're going to have students, if they so desire, that are going to be highly sought after in terms of universities who have cybersecurity programs. Um, our students are going to leave these programs with in industry certifications um, and, and college credit. Um, and they're going to be able to enter into well-developed, or sorry, they're going to develop career skills um, that even should they not go into cybersecurity, their ability to collaborate, communicate, problem solve, um, not give up, persevere, uh, those things are going to be skills that they develop that will serve them well, regardless of whether or not they stay in the cybersecurity field. So this program will have three courses. Um, the first one is Cybersecurity uh, One. Uh, we actually already have that course. Um, part of that course is, is to, um, already been taught in the district, um, and we will expand that course um, uh, into a full year course as opposed to just a, um, uh, a semester course. Uh, that will become Cyber One. Um, anybody who already took the first part of Cyber um, Security One uh, will be able to take part two next year so that they actually get that full year course. But moving forward, it will just be a whole year course, Cyber Security One. And that's where they're going to learn their foundational skills, um, develop their, their mindset with respect to cybersecurity. Um, and they will have access to our industry subject matter experts that will help, uh, uh, help them um, problem solve and gather ideas. Um, and they're also going to be getting a lot of hands-on learning using um, cyber.org um, that will help move us forward. When we go to cyber two, that course is entirely aligned to Compatia Security Plus, which is the industry standard for um, cybersecurity. So all of our work is aligned to that and students will develop and complete certification or um, receive certifications as they complete the course. Um, they will also be assigned a cyber mentor. Thanks again to our um, experts. So every student will have a mentor from somebody in the field. Uh, they will um, be able to explore real world opportunities and they will be actually doing some real problem solving through national, state and national competitions. In cybersecurity too is where we start having the opportunity for dual enrollment, which means students would be able to receive college credit from completing those courses. Um, and then finally, if you continue on to cybersecurity three, we anticipate cybersecurity three is less of a course and much more of expanded opportunities um, for additional certifications. Students will um, at that point start actually um, veering off, not everybody doing the same kind of certifications. They'll move more into their areas of interest. We will have opportunities for internship um, and we'll, uh, they'll actually be out there working in the field that um, potentially they might actually stay there as a job when they graduate from high school. 
Excellent. Thanks, thank Dr. Collison. Yeah, thank you, Christine. I was just going to add, really, the focus here is not just developing those technical skills and those soft skills, the problem solving and teamwork skills, but really helping students get a foot into the industry, getting to know people who they may end up uh, working for or working with, because uh, we know that that's such a key factor in, in uh moving students forward, giving them the, the actual connection into the industry where they can start building relationships with other people that could lead to a part-time job, full-time job. Um, and so that's definitely part of what we're building out. Um, right now, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen though, because we want to take a few minutes and answer any questions you have. So feel free to unmute your microphone. And if you have any questions, we would love to answer those. I actually have one. Um, so my son is a sophomore this year, and I believe he is now or has taken Cyber 1. So that means he'll be eligible for Cyber 2 his junior year? He likely has only completed cybersecurity, what we would refer to as 1A. So 1B okay. would actually be available to him to next year, where he could um, actually take that potentially even in the fall semester. Um, uh, we want to do what's best for kids. So we would definitely have to work with um, uh, Lynette. Lord, uh, Lynette is actually offering the, the program cybersecurity too, though. He definitely will take cybersecurity 1B, whether he wants to do that in the fall or the, the spring, it'll be available and he can take that. Um, okay. But cybersecurity 2 won't be available until next year or not this coming year, the year after. So only cybersecurity one is the first cohort starts next year. So okay. he would actually be able to complete one and two before he would graduate. He gotcha. would have those connections with mentors. He could earn the certifications. He just wouldn't get that, that final last piece, but it would still be a good start. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Great question. I also have a question. My son is um, going to be a freshman next year. Mm -hmm. um, how, what... The cybersecurity one course, you said it was a year long course. Yes. And what, what would it replace, you know, from the normal course of study and the electives? I have two older um, daughters who are in high school, so I know how kind of the scheduling works. So what would that replace? It would be an elective. Okay. Okay. And then, so he would, again, if he did it in ninth grade and then two and 10th and three and 11th, would he, he wouldn't take any cybersecurity courses as a senior. Is that correct? Yeah. Or there's potential for independent study. I mean, there's a whole host of possibilities once you get okay. into high, you know, once he gets into high school, if he wanted to pursue that, but he could also, if you're worried, because we know elect electives are tight at that freshman year, he mm -hmm. could start as a sophomore and take uh, another computer science um, course. We have plenty. Um, in the district. So maybe not cybersecurity, but there are other um, computer courses that he could take programming or something of that nature. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. So for um, kids that are juniors, I've got my son over here. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Hello, good to see you. Good it's what we do you. this work for, so nice to see you. <laughs> who, um, you know, may or may not be interested in this um, yeah. term, but uh, in terms of exploration, since he's got a rising senior, is the that course choice, that first year course still available to him? Absolutely. And obviously, he's not going to get a certification, but um, let's say he doesn't go to college. Would there be any way to feed off of a certification after he's done with high school? and come back and just take that course if you want to get certified or? So that you actually, he could actually pursue certification outside of high school, even without us once he knew that information. But uh, Augustine, I see you're shaking your head. Do you want to jump in and share your thoughts on that as an industry expert? Because he can absolutely take the course next year, graduate yeah, from high school, and then Augustine? Yeah, you can, um, you can take like the course, like independent studies, for even uh, for Skitty Plus, you can take independent studies and write the exams and pass. Um, they have subscription on internet that you can just do. It's not that much. Maybe like uh, as of last year, it was like $100 a year. 
and it, it teaches you the whole course. It's a pre-recorded that you can just go through and take the studies. And after that, take the certification exams. And most people do take it at the pass. So you can do it outside uh, the school uh, settings. Okay. So probably no is the answer to somebody that's already graduated, can't come back to the school setting and take it, but you can hop on, uh, uh, you know, get it. I don't, I don't want to say no. And you didn't hear me say no. I didn't say yes. Um, my inclination is always to want to say yes. Like if it's best for kids, what can we do? Right. Um, but um, there are obstacles, right? Like once a student graduates, there are, we have legal obligations, right? We, that we have obstacles that we have to overcome, but it doesn't mean that we maybe can't find a way to do something. Um, so I think your question hasn't been posed to us before. So uh, there are definitely ways that we can help him after high school to make sure that he gets access to the stuff he needs, even if it isn't coming back to the school. But the fact that you've posed that question to us, I think is a great opportunity for us to go back to the team and figure out how do we break down those barriers? Cliff, did you, I, I saw you switch your microphone on. Did you have something to add? Yeah, I, I just wanted to add that a lot of times um, there are meetup groups who get together to do independent study for these tests. I, I, when I was pursuing my CISSP, I joined a meetup group um, and we met and we studied together. So um, as, as uh, you know, as was mentioned here, even if the school doesn't uh, offer an avenue once you once your son graduated there are there are all types of um, meetups groups that get together that study for these tests it's a very collaborative type um, um, path to these there's there's obviously the independent study but again a lot of times you could go on on the web and find a meetup group that is studying for this certification that certification you know this certification and join that group and have people who are already in the industry help with the studying for that particular um pr particular certification and that's and, and you never know as was mentioned here um, the school might look at something like that, you know, maybe sponsoring something like that for students who have graduated and don't have an opportunity to come back. Maybe they sponsor a meetup group for every, everyone to get together. I'm just throwing that out there, not saying the school does that, but it could be something yeah. that gets explored down the line. But there's always an opportunity to have these study groups that come together to study for these certifications. That's how I got mine. I'm pretty sure there's other individuals that may have done the same thing when they were pursuing their certifications. So Clifton, don't apologize for that at all. Um, remember our three tenets, one of them is student-centered. We mean that, we absolutely mean it. So um, we appreciate your perspective on that. And um, we really think that that was a great question. So thanks so much. Um, a quick question. My son will be an incoming freshman next year. Mm -hmm. So would this be, I know the freshman schedule is tighter than the other ones. Would this be the only elective he could choose? If he, if he took it as a freshman, as their schedule currently is, we're working on it. We're yes. really trying to work on changing those things, but we know if he would choose that, that that would be as elective as they currently stand. Um, okay. But he could also, again, choose a different elective and take this as a, um, as a sophomore and still complete it all before he graduated. Oh, okay. Thanks. This is three years. So. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Anybody else? Oh, I mean, really, it's sophomore year, if you're still taking a language, I mean, if you're taking that third year language, you're only going to have one elective sophomore year as well, right? Yeah, it, it, it is tight. And we're I, all I can promise you is that we are working really hard to make those changes. It's all part of the process. But yeah, for now, it's that's what it, where it stands. We are looking at it to make changes to allow that flexibility. So that, I mean, that sort of bodes another opportunity, if you will, to potentially having one of these groups after school. I mean, ap not yeah. after school during the day, but post high school or yeah, or maybe, it, maybe there is an after school program, you know, independent study or whatever. That's, that's a great consideration too. Um, uh, your, no, RJ would not have taken, I'm sorry. I don't want, I know that the, isn't RJ necessarily, but that's the name on the. No, it's Jackie, his mom. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Sorry. Um, Jackie, um, your um, son would not have 
taken cy- cybersecurity at all because he's at the middle school. Okay, never mind right. what I said stood true. I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss speak. Okay. So, all right. Uh, anyone else? We are really grateful for your time. We're also grateful that you stuck around this whole time. Uh, we know time is really tight. Matt, do you want to say something? Yeah, I'm going to share my screen again, and I have my email address and phone number up there. There's also a QR code. I can't paste a link in the chat because there's no chat, but there's a QR code if you have a phone and you're interested in you know, potentially having your son or daughter uh, register for this, uh, you can just let us know and then we can follow up and just make sure any questions you have are answered. Um, But with the email or phone, feel free to reach out and contact me if you have additional questions. questions Before we end. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I know it's not essential. I know, Augustine, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Uh, What programming languages would be recommended if I needed to learn Great. Cliff, did you want to hop on that? <laughs> I think he asked Augustine. So yeah, Augustine, Augustine, Augustine can definitely Augustine. answer first. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you, kind of, uh, Augustine, can start with like uh, JavaScript because I think that's how uh, it could help you with the basics, right? Before maybe jumping to Python. Okay. Java will help you a little more than jumping to uh, Python that is a little deeper. So maybe uh, Clifton can say something too. Uh, uh, I, I, I would just, yeah, I would I would just echo that. I think Augustine hit the nail on the head. JavaScript, um, Python is 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 uh leveraged a lot today, but there's a step to that. So th- those are definitely uh, a lot of my team members uh, work in JavaScript and Python today. So you know, I, again, I, Augustine was would say exactly what I just said to you. Nothing about C plus plus. No, not at all. If you for cybersecurity, you know that's programming like where you're actually creating apps, you're creating programs, cybersecurity, you, you typically don't do that. You you can, but it's typically going to be in a JavaScript. It's typically going to be in a Python that yeah. you're doing it for on the cybersecurity side. Okay. If you're interested in programming as, as an avenue within IT, then I would definitely say per, pursue um, the C++, C and C++ and those different programming languages. But for, yeah. for cybersecurity, that's not necessarily something you you'll, you'll see a lot. All right, thank you. That that clears up a lot. Does did that you, help? <laughs> Pressure. Woo! Don't have to go into C plus plus programming. <laughs> did you? Uh, can you still hear me? Did you um, take? Um, did you take Python in middle school? Oh, did they freeze? Are you? Sh- can you hear me? Yeah, I took it third trimester, eighth grade. Okay, so you you've already had some exposure to Python. Um, so um, th- and we have Python at the high school. If you haven't taken that, that That's that exists here. Okay. <sighs> All right. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time. I'm going to share my screen, and then um, feel free to reach out and contact me, and I can answer questions or connect you with someone who might have an answer. Um, and again, you can also just shoot me an email and let me know that you're interested and, um, then we can follow up with you, but want to thank you so much for your time tonight. And uh, Christine, I'm sorry. Did you want to? No, I was just going to say, you should also have Dr. Collison's, uh, email in the zoom link that was sent to you. Uh, so the email you received, if you're not sure his email address is in there as well. Awesome. Yeah. Well, again, thank you so much. We're going to wrap up. Uh, if there's no further questions, but loved having you all here tonight. And we look forward to chatting with you again in the future sometime soon. So thank you. Thanks everyone.